Hi listeners, welcome to another episode of Wreckage, an RPG podcast. I'm Lee, and I play Tink Er Taylor, the Orion mechanoid with a penchant for fine clothes and high profits. If you've enjoyed listening to us, why not leave us a review? It really helps bring more listeners into the fold. Now without further ado, let's rejoin our heroes in the land of Uri. Hello and welcome listeners to episode 6 of the Wreckage RPG uh, with me DM JGR and the wonderful uh, crew of adventurers just here. Say hello everybody. Hello, hello everybody. everybody. Hello. Hello. <laughs> and you may have noticed there was one extra voice in all of that, those keen-eared listeners. Uh, we have a guest joining us this week so I'd like to introduce Ollie. Hello, how's it going everyone? And Hello. Hello. Very well, thank you. Very well, very well. Um, oh, I thought and, that was yeah, directed and... at the listeners, sorry. That's why I didn't oh, was it really? Oh, well, I, 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 I'll take that I'll, one. I'll say uh, hello to you too, John. Hi, John. How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Ollie. Nice to see you. Um, and uh, we'll find out where he fits into our story as uh, this episode progresses. Um, so, without further ado, are we all ready to crack on with episode number six? Yeah, already six. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, let's, let's do, it. do it. I know, six already. Right, let's get going. It's been three days, let me go. <laughs> <laughs> you don't play. <laughs> you're going to play and you're going to enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just shut up and roll the dice. Just, just so you know, listeners, I haven't kept them locked in a box for three days. Yes. Just before anybody gets too con- concerned. <laughs> it's like it's co- in COVID. daylight in a week. COVID's done that for you, mate. You're good. <laughs> Right, so, last time round, Mac, Tink, Gillis and Galen finished their exploration of the hidden city within the mountains. Fresh, well, sort of fresh after their win over the king of this place, they set about trying to piece together what had happened within the dusty halls. All the cups and all the death. Certainly this wasn't a happy place, but a book was found. Yet its secrets were bound behind an ancient language none of the group could read. Their final search proved no more fruitful, but at least it did provide a few silver cups and a new crown for Mac, made of the oldest pillow the group have ever seen, and also the most makeshift crown the group has ever seen. Galen did begin to wonder if this was indeed the safest place for the Iceborne, but after some careful deliberation, the group eventually decided to put their trust in the Iceborne's decision. If they want to come here, then let them. So, our group set out once more and returned to the Iceborne, who, on their arrival, were keen to hear the news. It was good. A new home. Safety, at last. It did also turn out that Jeremy had been having a rather good time. So, after a restful night, the group escorted Sachi, Capo, Ulsa, Alsa, and a couple of scouts to the hidden city. They were thrilled and rewarded the group with a magnificent pair of throwing axes, and a favour. The favour of an Iceborne clan of warriors, now that may indeed be useful. However, there were still a few loose ends to finish, so our group set off to meet with their contacts in Tosca, and eventually head towards Marquis to find out what secrets the book and staff hold. So, our group, with the Slate Peak Forest parting way in front of you to reveal the rolling farmland surrounding Tosca, you make your way across the now drying fields. This is so much better underfoot than your last trek here. And as you make your way over the hills, the collection of farmsteads and homes now come into view. And I ask you, what would you like to do? We should probably go and return Daisy to Fergal, shouldn't we? Yep, that gets my vote. Yep, let's do it. Yep. You want to okay. see Daisy? So you make your way off towards uh, Fergal's farm, owned by Fergal and Fergal, brothers. (laughs) As you make your way up to the farm, you find Fergal working over a plough. He's there, just tinkering away. He sort of looks up and sees you come back. Willow, how are you doing? It's been a while since I've seen you. Hello, Fergal. We have a present for you. It's, oh, I do love a present. What present have you got me? Close your eyes and hold out your hands. And he closes his eyes and holds out his hands. And Mac dumps Daisy in his arms. Okay, and as, as this suit gets sort of dumped into his arms, he drops it. 
Um, as the weight of the sheep, he can't quite hold it, and he sort of drops it down on the floor, and he goes, Oh, can I open my eyes now? I think I know what it might be. <laughs> yes, you may open your eyes. And he opens his eyes, he goes, Oh, it's Daisy, Daisy, how you do? And he goes down, and he starts sort of ruffling his head up against the sheep, and you do notice the expression on the sheep, Mac, is slightly strained at this sort of embracing from his, his owner. Um, she is doing but, but very well. Seems... Jeremy has been taking extra special care of her. He goes, oh, extra special care of her. Has he been going through her wool? Well, I... Tink, uh, sorry, go on. <laughs> no, no, Tink, you cannot answer uh, that well, question. Well, no, Tink, Tink just kind of looks at, like, Galen and Gillis and is like, how do they tell them apart? I think it's smell. Ah. <clears throat> but, uh, yes, Virgo, they have got very close. Oh, very close, very close indeed. I do like that. That's all very good. Oh, I tell you what, I am so very happy for you bringing him back to me. Hold on one moment. And he sort of disappears off into the the, uh, the building just behind you. Just to, um, just, just to it, clarify, like, Daisy's a female sheep, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay, fine. Is it not like cows where they're all female and then there's, like... Are they? Or well, you can check if you like. Um, but well, you Jeremy's know. a male... Yeah. That's why that, yeah. th- he was put out to stud whilst he was at, uh, <laughs> at the Iceborne camp. I'm just checking this. He can barely walk straight. <laughs> <laughs> so whilst you're having a conversation about... <laughs> whilst you're having a, a conversation about the biological sex of the sheep, um, Fergal comes back out and he's holding this beautiful woolen jumper and it's sort of dyed red and he sort of holds it up to you and goes, Look, 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 my wife made this. Uh, do you want it? Is that orc sized? Uh, it's a bit <laughs> small for an orc. It's more human sized. But he sort of holds it up to you in sort of like a. Oh, it is very place. it is very nice. If I have a very small child at some point, I, per- per- I will definitely put it on them. Thank you. And he graciously <laughs> takes the uh, jumper. Okay, so he takes the jumper. He goes, Oh, I tell you, whilst you're all here, would you would you like some stew? Oh, yes. Oh, and, and another exciting thing happened whilst we were away. You may have noticed, oh, yeah? and he what? points to his crown. I am now King Mac. There you go. Oh! It's a very nice crown you've got there. It is, is it? Tink made it for me. Do you know what I didn't notice to start with? It's very big <laughs> on your head. Well, I had to slay a giant for it. Ooh. What's a dark? What's a giant? Uh, they're G- like giant. people, but big. Ooh. Bigger than me. Bigger than you. Bigger than me. Ooh, he's <laughs> a strong man. I better keep you away from my wife. <clears throat> <laughs> uh, why is that? Is would she be scared of me because I killed a giant? Oh, she might be impressed, and I don't want her running away. Oh, I see. Don't worry. You know, you come here strutting around with your big crown and give him a sheep back. It's more than I've done over the last few months. <laughs> I give um, Galen a nudge and I'm like, check out this battle of the minds. <laughs> right. um, would you like? Would he like some stew? Or you got things to do? Uh, we do have to go and see some other people, but I think we could have some food first. I'm gonna we look at the other people. We could take the stew to go. Is that all right? Oh, but I'd have to give you some bowl. Do you have anything that you could put the stew in, maybe? Oh, we have we some cups. cups. <laughs> we got these cups. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so may or may not kill us if we drink out of them. I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> a cup of stew. I don't We've know. I've got this drink already out of it. So. <laughs> he goes back inside and he comes out with a with a with a little bucket and he sort of there with a little, this little bucket filled with stew with a, a ladle and he sort of starts offering it out to you. Um, and any of you that sort of offer him out a cup, who's offering him a cup? Okay, so it okay, pours you a little bit of stew into the cup, um, and it sort of gives you some mac as well. And he says, "Thank you very much. This is a this is a real real happy day. You've really made my day. Thank you." That is you okay. Sort of see that he's, if ever you're he's in little... trouble again, you can come and ask King Mac for help. 
I, I will come and ask Kin Mac for help. And you can sort of see he looks down at Daisy once more. There's a little tear running down his eye. He's very, very happy that you've brought back his sheep. Galen, permit me to inspect that cup, please. No, it's just got some stew in it, Tink. So but you Tink can have a look if you want. Stick your finger in. He grabs it. He grabs it off of you. He examines it for a second. And then he just, when Ferg was not looking, he just kind of tosses it, <laughs> like tosses the contents over his shoulder <laughs> and then hands the cup back to Galen. What was uh, wrong with the stew? I have a feeling that dysentery is not on your list of wishes to complete before you die. Of dysentery. Very well. <laughs> uh, on your, how do you humans put it? List of the bucket. <laughs> Here lies Galen. Shat himself to death. <laughs> <laughs> you ever seen that in an RPG okay. before, have so. you? <laughs> I have to change my Death. name from Gaiden Pyreheart to Gaiden Pyrehole. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Mint. Wrong. <laughs> Gaiden uh, scared to fuck. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Gaiden Pyrehole, sir of the water cupboard. <laughs> Priest of the Ember so Orifice. Like, he, he t- he... <laughs> <laughs> oh god! Wow. So, so as as <laughs> oh, my, my oh, no. face. So as uh, Ow. <laughs> I'm not a natural so as, smiler. As Fergal sort of like looks looks at this sort of the group of you and sort of just shrugs his shoulders, walks walks back in, uh, back inside, and and sort of as he goes, he goes, "Oh, I'll tell my wife you said I." You do that. I will not say I hello will, will. because I do not want her chasing after us. Boy, well, that, it, you know what? That is a very safe thing to say. Uh, anyway, thank you so much for bringing my sheep. I hope you enjoy the jumper. We will. Thank you. He sort of shuts the door. And, and, Matt, and do you reckon like uh, Jeremy him? would like this jumper? He already <laughs> has a woolly jumper. Well, he might need another Isn't one that... in the winter. Well, Is he that might. Akin to cannibalism, wearing the Maybe. skin of his foes or his his, com- <laughs> his contemporaries. <laughs> Maybe, um, maybe Tink can fashion a balaclava out of it or something for you. <laughs> and he, he kind of you, you can see him tapping his chin. However, I could make a cape. <sighs> yes, Fit a cape a would king. go very nicely with my crown and my scepter. That is a very good idea, Tink. And he hands over Very the jumper. Well, I shall fashion you a cape, and <laughs> literally all he does is like cut the arms off and like cut it says one long sheet and hands it back. I'd like you to make a dexterity crafting <laughs> check, please. Some, some, else. some <laughs> more master tailoring going on. Oh well, double six and a three plus my. Okay. Decks. Yeah, that's a lot. That's twelve, fifteen, that's a, that's seventeen. A lot. You make you make a really nice cape. Although <laughs> the thing is, because it's only like um, because it's sort of a human sized jumper. It sort of only really comes down like and covers like half your back, so it's like a small cape. It's like you're sort of almost wearing like a child's cape on your back, made of wool. But, but it, it sits very comfortably really over good. your shoulders, fits it, very well. Is it like that thing the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man's got on? Yeah, a little tabard. Yeah. It might be worth pointing out to the listeners that Ollie looks completely confused as to what he's walked into <laughs> in this episode. <laughs> like, what, what is going on in this RPG? Uh, I just John did briefly. Uh, right? Yeah, yes, okay, sure he did. Mm-hmm. I mean, I did. Uh, I have been listening along to the podcast. I haven't completely 100 percent caught up, but uh, yeah, I, I, I discovered the theme of this uh, role-playing game early on. <laughs> <laughs> West Country dysentery. <laughs> <laughs> Okie doke. So, um, what are you folks going to do now? Uh, when are we going to head to Marquee and sell this stuff? I think we're we going had... to the middle of town to just meet up with this guy that was going to pay us to sort the items. Oh, yes. Yeah, the, yeah, the guy. Yeah, the guy. some yeah. money. Tink, I know yeah. that no money might not matter to you. No, it does. He, he wants to sell these cups, they're worth a fortune. Okay, so you, you sort of make your way down lessons. into the centre. <laughs> he's a damn good tailor when he's got the right materials. <laughs> and the right workshop. No sp- <laughs> <laughs> and he's making for humans, not orcs. 
Oh, you make your excuses. way down into the centre of Tosca. Um, and sort of, you know, there's not the same gaggle of people, but you do quite easily find um, Theo Lucresca. He's the, the, the sort of the captain of the local militia. Um, just to remind you, he's a tall man, late 40s, his dark, well-kept hair, a few scars on his cheek onto the side. And he sort of looks over at you and sort of like with a moment, sort of a look of surprise on his face. Then he sort of shakes it and sort of stands up and starts walking over to you and goes, Oh, hello. I wasn't... It's been a number of days. We thought something had happened to you. Yet you are here, and that is some mighty finery you seem to be wearing there. Uh, I, sorry, I forget your name. But My Mr. name is Orn. King Mac. <laughs> and he sort of looks and goes, <laughs> Mac, uh, a king of what? Um, well, myself, mainly. Very well, well You may King call Mac. me your um, majesty. And he sort of looks really confused about it. He goes, I'm, I'm captain of the guard here and you are not my liege. So, anyway, um, what do you have to report? Uh, we have fixed your problem you had with the raiders. Yes, and how have you fixed this? Um, we found them somewhere nicer to go and they m- will come and see you and won't steal from you but might help you with things now. And he's sort of like, you see him, he's in pause and just like, look at you. You found them somewhere safe. Yes. And we've... they're going to come to us and not steal? Permit yes. me to interject, my good man. We have, we reached an agreement with the raiders to find them settlement. They had been ousted from their lands due to disagreements with their political nature. However, they have now a dwelling under the well i cannot say where they live however we have made them agree to come and contribute to society roll a persuasion check oh what's that on communication uh, communication can i push etiquette on that or not i've got a focus in etiquette but uh, um I, I would say for him i would say yes okay or oh, plus four on this then oh uh, well i'm gonna need it because <laughs> uh ten. Ten. okay <laughs> He sort of looks a little bit unconvinced by your response, but he's interested and says, help how? I'm going to interject here. Give Galen a nudge and say, Galen, can you take over? Because Mac, well, he's Mac. Tink is socially inept and no one takes me seriously dressed like this. So, okay, so I'll step forward and kind of explain the situation, kind of go over what Tink has already just, uh, like, um, divulged with him, um, but also kind of fit in the fact that, you know, he is obviously paying mercenaries like ourselves to protect them from external threats. Um, these Iceborne Raiders obviously are quite powerful, but are willing to kind of support. They need some assistance in terms of provi- providing livestock so that they can. Um, settle and look after themselves they don't want to be raiding um, and maybe they can come to an agreement with you in terms of some sort of support package okay roll I would like you to roll a communication persuasion check and you can add plus two to that (laughs) don't fuck it like I did for such a (laughs) daft explanation I give a 12 Mac and Tink a bit of a look and say look that's how it's done boys (laughs) So you sort of, you see him take a moment and he pauses and thinks. I shall have to think on this, but thank you. Thank you nonetheless. Uh, Your pay, yes? And he sort of reaches down to his pocket and he holds out ten silver coins. And sort of, here you go, your pay. Thank you. And Mac will take it. Okay, Mac takes the ten silver. Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. Won't be seeing that again. (laughs) Um, I, I, I think I think the agreement was uh, three silver coins per day, and I think it's been more than three days now. Three into ten uh, does not divide equally. Thanks, thanks, Tink. Thanks. And he sort of looks and he goes, uh, "I believe I said ten silver for the group of you." Mac thinks otherwise. Um, I do not think Galen would be wrong. If Galen says that that is 
it should be more, then I think it should be more. I've got 30 silver written in my notes here. I think and, it was he, 30 silver. And, and he looks like it's no, 10 silver. My good man, I have an eidetic memory. It was definitely 30 silver that was proposed. At a rate of 10 silver per day, and we have been gone three days. Therefore, you owe us 20 more silver. And he looks around and, and looks at you all. And you can see there's a moment when he looks at King Mac. <laughs> and he sort of sighs and goes, worth a shot. And he goes back towards the little post that he was at. And you see him rustle around and he comes back with two more bags. And goes, there you go. And sort of gives them to Mac. And there's your, there's your silver. <clears throat> Tink at this point, because he's like, you know, six foot seven. He kind of stoops down right into the guy's face and goes, a pleasure doing business with you, sir. And then stands back And he's sort of like, looks up and he looks up, just stares you in the eye, like completely unfazed and goes, it's a pleasure doing business with you as well. And I'm sure that if you're after more mercenary work, you can find some in Marquis, I guess. Very well. And he says, and he sort of looks around and he goes, yeah, I should probably do this. And he goes back to his little post and he, he comes back and he writes a little note on the paper and he goes, here, it's a recommendation. Um, on completion of a successful job, how successful this will be, we'll find out, but you have my recommendation for further work. Thank you. Much appreciated. Come, gentlemen and Mac, shall we proceed to Marquis? It's like Mag's not a gentleman anymore. No, yeah, well, he's because he's an orc, king. right? He's, he's an orc. <laughs> Gentle orc. He's royalty. Um, did people want me to give them their share of the silver, or shall I hold it for everybody? Yeah, you can hold it for a while for me. I haven't oh, God, to... we didn't think of that. <laughs> you can you can hold, hold on to it, Mac. You've been doing such a good job so far of holding on to things. I am good at holding things. <laughs> <laughs> wearing things <laughs> it's less likely to get stolen off Mac to be honest yeah that's okay. what I'm thinking where where are you uh, <clears throat> what are you going to do now uh, how much daylight's left um, so at this time uh, now so that was about the whole day's worth of travel so it's sort of from, from first light to last light is how long it took you to get to Tosca so the sun is starting to set um, at this point, uh, the orange sky, you know that you're, where you started this journey is probably the next place that you could feasibly stop. And that's about eight hours away, and that's the Dandy Owl um, coach house, um, which is on the road towards Marquis. Is there anywhere um, in Tosca we could maybe stay the night? So as you sort of like, as you look around sort of this central plaza, you do notice that there's, um, there's a bunkhouse um, that sort of just looks like a a local meeting place that's just got a, a few beds to, to one side um, as you sort of like look around at it um, you can sort of see that Theo sort of clocks that you're looking around at the bunk as he goes do you need somewhere to stay? I, th I think yes, we I will need somewhere to stay assumption. and uh, transportation because... um, the next day where can we seek um, or secure transportation on tomorrow's Quick journey? Quick question out of character John did mm -hmm. you say that the technology level includes railways at this uh, point? The so, so um, good question. There is a railway um, that runs along the coast of uh, or the Orem coast. Um, however, it ends in Marquis. They have yet to build the northern section of it up oh, okay. to Orgrin. The reason being is because there's too many raids, usually, so they haven't been able to build it safely. Um, so they've only sort of built it in the south of the Orem coast. Are there any carriage type, you know, like horse and horse drawn carriage type places um, we could rent? There's and get lots tra transport. Uh, potentially out here, probably not. Um, <laughs> there might be somebody passing through. You might be able to obtain some horses, um, but there aren't there aren't any um, in your in your current area. There's there is a stable. Um, whether they have horses, they might do. Um, sort of near the near the current coach, the the bunk house where you're at. They sort of you look around again, and there is a stable just off to one side. Like this sort of seems like it's the centre of Tosca. There's not many buildings here, but you can sort of see it's like maybe where the farmers come together every so often. Why didn't I make Tinker Transformer? 
<laughs> it would have saved us so much travel time. <laughs> and and Theo sort of looks at you and goes, well, well, if you want to stay the night, please do. Let's just say it's an extra thank you. Very well. Come along. And I kind of this, back is, into the others. Is this free like, digs? Free so you, you sort of make your way inside this 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 little sort of long house. Um, you know, it's got a little eating area. The beds are just like thin straw. They're pretty uncomfortable, in all fairness. You sort of start to look around at them. You poke them a little bit. Oh, they are not fun at all. But you know, it's free. So what? You know, if you want to stay somewhere nice, you'd have to to, to really pay out for that, or at least go somewhere that has nice beds. Um, which around here, this might be the nicest bed that you can find. <clears throat> um, is there anything you would like to do in the evening? It would be nice to maybe try and secure some transport for tomorrow. So maybe we can ask at the inn or go to these stables. Maybe. Okay. So there's there's nobody else around sort of this bunkhouse at the moment. You sort of see that the, the bunkhouse is like opposite where the guards stay. Um, and the stables are just round to the side. Um, if you make your way, sort of looking over at the stables in that general direction, you do see that there's sort of like a, a stable hand just currently mucking out a stable. Okay, let's go over to the stable hand and, and spark up a conversation. And the stable hand sort of looks up at you and he's, he's sort of like, sort of a, a boy, sort of in his sort of, looks like his early teens, um, no hair on his face, um, scraggy hair. And he sort of just looks up, sort of sweeping the muck from where he is. He looks up and goes, Hello, sir, can I help? Uh, yes, we're in need of uh, transportation. Can we acquire some horses from you? Well, do you have some coin? And I might have a few horses. How many horses are you after? I kind of look across at the rest of the group and go, Does anyone not want to take a horse? Um, it will have to be quite a big horse. Do you have an orc sized horse? Or a horse-sized like, orc. Look, he looks up and he goes, uh, <laughs> yeah. "If I'm if I'm honest, sir, our, our, our horses are just uh, they're they're just small travel horses. Um, I've got a pony. Uh, I've got two brown horses, uh, <laughs> and I've got one slightly older grey horse. Um, perhaps we could get like a wagon or something. Uh, oh, I'll have to go ask my par about that because the wagons are wagons, so you know." Tell him you that, do that. Tell him that King Mac requires a <laughs> wagon. And and he goes, okay, I'll do that. I'll be back in in a few minutes. And he sort of puts down his mucking tool and, and goes off, um, just round the back. And sort of you see him walking up a little path towards a, a house just behind. Um, he's gone about ten, fifteen minutes or so, but he he comes back and there's a there's a larger man with him broad shoulders, and he sort of just looks and he goes, well, oh, uh. I, I hear you want to buy a wagon and a horse. Or borrow one. Or borrow. Ooh, I don't know about borrow. Um, I tell you what, I could sell you. I could sell you a, a horse and a cart, but um, you know, I'd have to go and get a new cart, so it'll cost you fifty silver. Uh, what do we think, people? Do we want to buy a cart? Nobody wants to try and horse. convince this guy that he's trying to sell it to a king. Anyone want to try and continue that lie? I can, I can try and haggle. I'm not sure this is going to be Max. <laughs> Mine neither. And he, he said, "Hello, so he goes 50, 50 silver, fifty silver. Yeah, I mean, the wagon is something that I'll have to properly replace. You know, I have an idea. You know, I have seen places before when they have have." done things for kings they can put on all their signs um uh horse lender to the king and then they can sell their horses for more money so we could pay you less money and let you write horse seller to the kings how about the that seal of mac and he sort of looks at you and goes, but, but, but we don't have a king in the Orem coast. We have the coin master. I am a king. Do you, <laughs> Do you know? <laughs> and I, oh. I bang my scepter down, point at my crown. <laughs> and all the dead roll, from the village come back. Roll a persuasion check. <laughs> <laughs> all the graves, just all these hands burst up from the graves. Ten. <laughs> 
ten. Oh, and dear. at this moment that you're saying, you know, I'm a king, I'm a king, and because Pa, Pa, he's a king, and and he just looks and goes, this guy is not a king. He's just got a thing in his head, like fifty silver, take it or leave it. I'm gonna look across at these these horses that he's got and go. These are not worth thirty silver. Look, they're all on their last legs. They're probably gonna die on the journey. Like <laughs> these, these things are these things are old and decrepit. We'll take them and and the cart for thirty silver, and that is more than enough to replace the cart and these scraggly horses that you're gonna give us to to pull the scraggly. scraggly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, roll got dreadlocks one or final persuasion check. Um, what is that on, sorry? Uh, communication. Communication. Uh, so, uh, 13. He looks at you and says, Look, you strike a hard bargain. I'll give you 40 silver for the lot. As in, like, a horse and a cart. So it may be permissible to accept no. this offer. No, no deal. To... We're, uh, no, we're, we're not accepting <laughs> this. It's Thirty dollars away. Carrying four Check of out us. Dragon's Den over away. Look, I, I'll offer it. I offered him thirty silver. That's more than enough. We're heading back to the bunkhouse, and if he wants his thirty silver, you can come and find us at the bunkhouse, sir. You know, so you. All right, you can come find me at my house if you want some horses and a cart for forty silver. <laughs> Very well. <laughs> And he sort of walks off in the other direction. And you sort of see the kid go, But Pa, he's a king! He's not a king! <laughs> <laughs> so so they've just left us in the thing with the horses? Uh, the, the, the kid's still there mucking oh, out. Okay. All right, well, I guess I'll, I'll, on, I'll follow <laughs> after Galen. Okay. So you make your way back to the bunkhouse. Is there anything else anybody would like to do in this evening um, before bunking down? Steal the horses in a cart. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. I think Tink, Tink's more than happy just to go and shut down. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm thinking about... You know, like, like he does, leaning against the wall in the corner. One scraggly horse pulling four people. One of them's Max, so technically six people. Um... <laughs> We may as well walk. It's not going to be like galloping away, is it? True. And only that, no, so it might a speed massive things up. <laughs> to riding animals. <laughs> Can't you fly okay. anyway? No, I'm not actually a crow. It's just a thing I am. <laughs> Cutting about, like dressed like a crow, and you can't even <laughs> just turn like into flapping. <laughs> just what else? Like the street. Ah! Ah! Come on, come on. Honestly, what are you what? doing, Gillis? Priest of the Flame who can't start a fire and a fucking crow man who can't fly. Max, the most competent one in our group. <laughs> I'm not denying it. He's, he's king, a king he's with king no kingdom. King. He is. He's the only one with the fucking title now. <laughs> you can talk. We've got a tailor in cool. We can't tailor. <laughs> he can, just not for, not for orcs. It's literally his name. <laughs> as, you, as you have this wonderful conversation as sort of like things lull down and you sort of have a bit of a bit of a conversation with each other about how wonderfully good you are at everything you do um, <laughs> yeah. you sort of settle down I down for the are. night it's <laughs> <laughs> and you get and you get a, you get a, an alright night's sleep I mean nobody disturbs you but you do get woken up like at the first light by some sort of animals and sounds like crow, crow, crows cawing crows. in the distance and sort of the chorus the chorus wakes you up. Um, is this and you might be telling your like friends Gillis. to be quiet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's me on the, on the table. That's his prayer to the to the great god Rook, right? That's what they all sound like. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, where where are you folks god. heading? What are you What are you deciding to do? Well, we're not heading to Marquis to sell this stuff and yeah. maybe find someone to translate the book, the, the runes yep. of the book. Yep. And okay. maybe find out a bit more about this um, scepter as well. Cool. So, um, as you know, it takes you about sort of uh, a, f a few hours to make to make it your way uh, back to the, the coastal road, uh, the point at which your adventure all started in, in the Dandy Owl. 
as you sort of are making your way back towards the, the coach house, you know, you see the odd straggler on the road just passing you to and fro. Uh, you see a man pulling a cart and he waves as he goes past. He goes, hey, could have been yours for 40 silver. And just sort of just rides past you sort of on his on his way towards um, the, the coach house. I'm going to lean across um, and go, Gillis, feather that sucker. <laughs> <laughs> Magic missile. <laughs> just just Throw in the back the of his like horse's ass, so it like shoots off and he flies off the back or something. It's it's a mana blast. Tink has been quick it's enough. It's not just gonna slap the horse on the ass and blow a hole through it. <laughs> could um could Tink have been quick quick witted enough to like jab his um cane into the wheel spokes? Uh no, it sort of took you a bit by surprise really. Uh, so okay. it's you know it, it goes off. And, and sort of rage is past. You sort of go go for it, and sort of by the time you sort of have that wonderful thought, it's like one of those wonderful things mm. in hindsight when you're like, yeah. I could have done that. <laughs> um, it sort of takes you about eight hours, so it's sort of like late afternoon when you reach um, the coach house itself. Um, when you are um, approaching the coach house, you you do see um, sort of a, a little bit of you know traffic around you see people sort of leaving the coach house most people coming you see one person leave off um but there is an individual that sort of just catches your eye ever so slightly because he's sort of sat near the door um ollie i would like you to describe what the group so you see a tall aged elf uh but he's bent double and he's got a, a wooden staff that's supporting his weight um his clothing is ragged He's got light leathers beneath a dirty, torn, dark blue set of robes. And his staff is uh, made of a dark wood. And atop it is a dark blue slash black gem. He's got a very wrinkled face that's pitted with age. And he has a straggly white beard and moustache. Um, even his ears, which are pointed, um, are sort of wilting with his age. They're almost like wilting at the tips a bit. And he's just kind of like sat down in the corner. And so, as you see, um, so from your perspective, uh, Ollie, as you see the group approach, you notice the the very intrinsic staff that this orc is sort of ruling, and it instantly sparks your interest a little bit. Um, so, so that is sort of what draws your attention. And there is this wonderful awkward moment where you sort of almost both groups lock eyes with one another. Uh, I'm gonna Mac up it. Sorry, Sorry uh, no. I get up from my seat and go gambling across the road and try and snatch the staff from Mac. Really? Mac, it, would this, it would appear this homeless <laughs> oh, no. person oh, wants no. to acquire your staff. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, this is going to be the shortest in, like, the cameo ever. It's just going to turn around and punch him in the face. Everybody roll the shit. I've got Im- images of Mac on one end of the staff, this homeless elf on the other one. And Matt just do the whole slam. It's like the whole cut of the Avengers, yeah. 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 (laughs) Puny elf. So, um, you go go to grab it. Mac, do you resist? He certainly does. Okay, Mm -hmm. can you make an opposed strength test, please? This is a bit where you find out I've got a strength of four. (laughs) (laughs) I wish. Um, That is a grand total of nine. Uh, Nine? 15 with double fours. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Mac, Mac wins. Uh, so as you run over, you, you, grab like hold of this, you grab hold of this stuff and you try and sort of wrestle it out this, this orc's hands and Mac just like clenches his fist ever so slightly and it just doesn't <laughs> budge. Well, thanks for coming. I'll let be great. Yeah, off now. <laughs> <laughs> that was my plan all along. Um, so you see, you see this elf, and he's like grabbing at the stuff. He's like, Grr! "Give it, give it!" No, this is my staff. You already have a staff. And Max goes <laughs> fairly gently, just trying to swat this insignificant person away. Okay. Um, so as you sort of try and sort of push him away, uh, we'll do another opposed strength oh, check. God. Redemption. Uh, oh dear. Uh, another fantastic nine. Sixteen. <laughs> <laughs> Tink is going to lean easily, into Galen and say... You quite easily sort of swat him away. <laughs> three, three silver on Mac. <laughs> <laughs> three silver says Mac keeps his star. <laughs> no fool's going to take that bet, my friend. No fool. 
<laughs> and you get you get pushed away by this. Okay, and I like stumble back a bit, and I'm just gonna sort of look at the staff very intently, just like looking along the whole length of it, just sort of like taking it in. And you can see he's like he's got got bright blue eyes, but they like roll around his head a bit. He looks he looks very crazy. <laughs> so as you as you glaze your eyes over the the staff, you read uh, all the dwarvish runes along the side of it. Mm. You are very rude, elf. You had better <laughs> apologise to King Mac. King. And he's gonna pour him, pull himself up to his full height. Uh, so I'm gonna sort of back away slightly from Mac and uh, grovel a little bit and just be like, um, very, very sorry. Uh, must be mistaken. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. That is good. It is well known that Mac is very mag is very forgiving. Um, you are forgiven. Do not do it again. And he'll turn and walk away. Uh, can I can I see the staff though? Um, yeah. He <laughs> turns back round and waves it at him. It is a nice <laughs> staff. Uh, I'm going to take a, a closer inspection of the staff, see if there's anything that I might have missed from where he was sort of okay. wielding it. Uh, roll, roll a perception seeing check. Okay, perception seeing. Okay, that is a uh, twelve. Okay, so as he sort of waves this uh, the staff at you, you sort of like lock eyes and you look more closely at some of the runes that sort of you just pick up on for a second, and you pick up on words that say things like protection, uh, light. Um, you sort of see. That this, that the kind of runes that are imbued into the side of this thing is like there's some significant magic um, that was crafted in this. Um, you do also like now that you've got a much better. Author, you thought it was dwarvish to start with. You definitely know that these are dwarvish mm, runes. Okay. I just sort of look at Mac and the the rest of the group um, and be like, where where did you get this? Uh, Gillis has got to look at the whole group and say, which one of us is he talking to? <laughs> no, that's, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> he's got one eye to go to the stall and one to come back with a change. I think Tink would just kind of stare blankly at him. He, he doesn't. Know, he doesn't know how to deal with like what appears to be a homeless person. He, it's not it's way out of his wheelhouse. I was going to say, uh, excuse me. Uh, do you know? Do you know how to read the runes on the staff? Maybe. What's it to you? I would like a yes or no answer, or Mac is going to have to have a word with you. Oh, I can have words. I know lots of words. <laughs> <laughs> uh, si- simply. Very, very intimidating. Uh, simply, uh, yes, I suppose, in a way, maybe. Do, do you need the boggly eyes to read them? Is that why we can't? <laughs> I beg your pardon, whippersnapper? It's like a magic eye. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, I couldn't help myself there. Um, um, no, no, over here. Look at me. Oh, never mind. Um... I'm looking at you, bird man. <laughs> Hang on, this is no just me, a bird. This is the effigy. I thought you were going to say the great lord. I thought you were going to say this is an M&S bird. Then. <laughs> <laughs> the tink kind of makes a hmm, bird man noise. <laughs> the images of Sesame Street now. It's, it's <laughs> <of> creation. <laughs> it's Big Bird, it's... but he's just a giant crow. It's Big Bird talk, talking to the Grouch. He's died black. Yeah. It's Big yeah. Bird's goth brother. The Grouch is just yeah, yeah. <laughs> not so Big Bird. I don't want to draw attention to myself because mm. I hate the moon. Mm. Uh, anyway, back pink on tips on his emo fringe. <laughs> um, Sorry, Carol. Yeah, so. Look, if you can read this, we would really appreciate having you as a translator. Maybe we could pay for your services. You look like you could need, well, a bath and some money. <laughs> oh, all of those sound good. Um, but there is something you might be able to help me with. Maybe it's dangerous. I'm not... I wouldn't do that. You can catch yeah, things through in that, Gillis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I, I, I speak to Mac and like it happens all the time. You think I wear this regalia just for kicks? <laughs> People just can't get enough of the crow god. Crows are notoriously virile. Uh, are they? <laughs> <laughs> learn something new every day. Yeah. <laughs> it's just day my fantasy. I learn. Leave me alone. <laughs> and then help the obsession gonna be with the razzle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> sort of boot it, we open the doors and I walk in wardrobe and the missus is just sort of like, Kah! and fall the doors. <laughs> Getting back on track. <laughs> back, on, <laughs> back on track. Oh, sorry, what sorry. were we doing again? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Perhaps, gentlemen and Mac, it's worthwhile hearing what he has to say. Hmm. Okay. Speak, wizard. Well, aged man. Uh, there's, there's a certain ingredient that I'm after. Um, you may have heard of it. It's called a uh, Pallus plantolum. Um, they grow it in a, uh, an old monastery new here. And, uh, I need it for, uh, experiments. <clears throat> yes. So, mm. if we get you this okay. thing, you'll tell us what my scepter says. Mm-hmm. Maybe, uh... Or... Huh? Yes? Speak! Or I could just hit you with my scepter until you tell us what my scepter <laughs> says. I think that sounds like a great idea. Uh, let, let's you give it a let's go. go with the first option. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Well, so why do you need this ingredient? You said experiments. Yes, yes. Um, it's it's for a magical potion that I am imbuing. <laughs> That's not ominous at all. You're gonna need to give us more information, <laughs> my friend. Well, the plant is for me, and the staff information is for you. <laughs> yes. So does he have a laboratory for this experiment? Uh, um, n uh, fireplace. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, why can't you why, get this again? Where is that again? Remind me to stay well away from it. Uh, I I've tried in the past to go there, but uh, I got chased away. <laughs> so I came back here and uh, searched for brave adventurers such as yourselves to come and help me find it. <laughs> What would make monks so adverse to giving up plants? Uh, well, uh, they're not there anymore. Uh, it's just an old monastery. So what were you chased away by? I, um, well, I, I didn't see it very well, but it looked like, um, shadows of some sort, like black shapes in That's the surprising. mist. That's <laughs> surprising. Black shapes, you say? Hmm. Uh, Tink's going to consult his memory banks at this point. Does he have anything on black shapes? Are there myths or anything or legends that tell of these well, things? Well, this is one of the things that harks you back to uh, an incident that you had not more than about three months ago with a couple of the adventurers that you are with right now, whereby you fought a shadow of some kind mm. with no known origin. Um, so when you think back to that event, you do sort of think, Hang on a minute, I've come across shadows before, that's strange. Galen, Mac, could this be related to the time where we were in, ventured into a cave and you destroyed that wooden trinket? Uh, I don't know. Okay, I, re I redirect my question <laughs> at Galen. <laughs> it could be, but then again I see dark shadows every day. In the as the sun sets, so this is not this is not new. The old man could just be hallucinating. Look at him, Galen. Just this is not the time for poetry. As a kite. Do you remember? <laughs> um, I, I, I do think, remember man. Think, and he kind of starts shaking. I do remember. Me. I remember. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I remember. Like all this. right. <laughs> uh, yes, I remember. I, I obviously um, have no idea what they're going on about. <laughs> mm. No, you have no idea. So at this point, Tink will kind of he's still got he's still got Galen by the lapels, but he, he turns to Ollie's character and says, "We may be able to assist. However, you would need to accompany us for insurance purposes." Mm -hmm. Maybe I stick close to the big orc, though. Yeah. <laughs> Very well. Y yeah, you stick close to me so I can keep an eye on you. 
and I'll keep my eyes on all of you. <laughs> at once. I could fashion and at that moment, his eyes are sort of like looking around at everybody. <laughs> should we? Should I get Tink to fashion a backpack so that like Ollie can ride in it on Mac's back? I don't think we have the three days it'll take you to do that. <laughs> yeah, it might take a while. Ooh. So, so in, as uh, as um as Tink's obviously still got me, I'm gonna just kind of like say say to him like no one else can hear, but I do not trust this guy. There is something odd about this strange elf man. And, and Tink Wizard. like slowly turns his head back towards you. I do, <laughs> and then just lets you go. <laughs> I have I have zero reason to believe he is untrustworthy. As you turn so sort of back towards, the, uh... oh, sorry, carry on. So, so it's going to turn to the uh, aged elf and say, "Look, if you're going to accompany us, uh, what's your name?" Hmm. Uh, well, the people here they call me Tan Tan, or just Tan for short. You can call me Tan or Tan Tan either. Just one Tan is enough. And you? What are your names? I mean, Birdman, Tin Mac, Tin Man, uh, Big Orc, and um. Warrior person, I assume. Yeah, my name is uh, Galen. Oh, mm. you just call me Galen. Mm, okay. I am Tink. You are not very uh, respectful, right. smelly elf. <laughs> smelly. <laughs> <laughs> this is my good friend Tink. Yes. Acquaintance. This is my good friend Galen. Okay. This is my good friend Gillis. Gillis. This is Jeremy the Sheep. Uh, and I am King Mac. King Mac, okay. <laughs> I should be able to remember that all. Yeah. Mm. Good. So we go now? I, I'm just going to just gonna turn to the others. Are you sure you don't want me to hit him until <laughs> he tells us what we want to know? <laughs> yeah, I'm with Mac on that one, but obviously I, you guys I mean, not, uh... I would say I'm with Mac on this one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Max going to turn around, grab a hold of Tan Tan. Please uh, tell us what the staff says. Um, <laughs> I remember part of it. Um, um, wh- wh- he raises his fist. Uh-huh. I think Tink will put his hand on Max's shoulder and say, "Diplomacy may be the better course of action here." No, I, I don't think um, I'm going to interject as well. Like, I think we need to know. That he can read it before we go on his errand. He says he can, but we need some proof. Just read some of it. 50% now, 50 when the job's done. Uh, That's fair. I'll, and uh... Matt will only break 50% of your limbs. <laughs> <laughs> the, the arms, so you can still walk. Uh... <laughs> yeah, we, we don't need his arms. Just put the staff down his um, arms, sleeves of his uh, cloak. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, like a scarecrow. I'll um. But smellier. I'll take the <laughs> staff, and I like how everyone's just assumed because I'm a raggedy elf that I must smell terrible. <laughs> I never disguise <laughs> myself. <laughs> he stinks to high heaven. Um, I'll I'll take the staff. I'll like while I'm being gripped by the presumably by the scruff of the shirt, and sort of look it over, and I'll point out a few runes. Um, we like um, see here, it's a it's a. It's dwarven. Um, yes, yes. You can tell. Um, is uh, protection. Are you sure it's dwarven? Hundred percent. It would be a very big dwarf that would hold this. Well, it's what it seems. It was being held by a giant before. Well, it could be a tall dwarf. I suppose. Uh, it's uh, <laughs> uh, 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 protection and light. There you go. Uh, there's some information. Uh, Max going to look around at the others for. Whether they think that's enough. Tink's tapping his chin again. Why would protection and light be imbued on a staff that could resurrect the dead? Uh, well, I guess you'll have to wait and see. <laughs> Ooh. Curious. <laughs> well, I guess um, uh, he's kind of called my bluff here in the sense I told him to read it and he's just told us some BS and. I can't confirm whether he's telling the truth or not. Mm. So, at this moment... scared of Mac enough. <clears throat> at this moment, uh, Tantan, you're sort of like looking around at the stuff and then you sort of like look around a little bit more and you do notice that um, one of the bags has got like what looks like a book 
and you just catch a quick glimpse of this large bound book in one of the bags. Okay. And again, it sparks your interest. Uh, I'm going to try and uh, free myself from Max hefty uh, grip, because, you know, third time's the charm. And <laughs> Go on then, <laughs> post strength chest, let's go. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, that wasn't very good. That is ten. <laughs> oh, yeah, still beat you twelve. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> so you try, and, you try and wrestle free. You get your feet down to the ground, but then Mac just like picks just, you up Just like again. scampering a bit of... <laughs> Uh, so at this uh, point, I I'm assume... going to notice he's got his eyes fixed on this kind of bag, and I'd be like, D do, do you want to see the book? <gasps> yes, book! Book! Let me see, let me see! Okay, it's so written in I'll Old Giant. The book out of the bag. Do you read Old Giant? Well, he might read it. Uh, maybe. Let me see, let me see! Very well. Show him the book, Gaylor. So I'll reach for the book, get it out, turn to kind of the front page and see what he thinks. Uh, I'm going to sort of flick... To my, to my dearest neighbours. <laughs> I'm going to start flicking through the book and I'm like, hmm, interesting, yeah, ooh, ooh, yeah, ooh, lots of information. Max still got it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Max, like... you sit up there being held up and just... <laughs> 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 uh, yes, um, old giant, yes, very, very interesting, unique. Won't find many people that can read this, I tell you. Ha <laughs> ha! Yes, you need me. And and so at this moment, whilst you're reading this book, uh, you start to get just from flicking through. You can understand that this is a journal, a journal written, uh, keeping track of events that were happening within a place called Jotunville. Um and it's signed at the front uh, by um, the king, simply written. <laughs> Elvis. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um, last entry. <laughs> Everyone's like to up your dad. Oh. And what the the one bit that you'd sort of like pause on for one moment is uh, just a passage that says um, the pact. I've made the pact. We shall get our long rest as we deserve. Mm. Okay. I'll mentally log that. So Tink kind of um, speaks to Tan Tan at this point. Like, Please do translate the final entry, and then uh, we may assist you on your quest to attain this route. Okay, if I tell you book, you help me find plant and bath, maybe yes. I Cannot guarantee right. a bath. <laughs> He like you can However, see his plants, demeanor. Yes. <laughs> his, his demeanor droops slightly, but he goes, um, "But lots of plant and we be good." Yes, 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 yes. And I'll uh, I'll reveal what I just what you just told me. I'll just okay. So the last the last passage itself. Um, so the 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 final one um, just simply states, <clears throat> "Today's the day, the day we drink, the day we sleep. Finally, rest, rest from." What is outside? Rest from everything that's happened. Rest. And then it's just signed off. Gentlemen, are you aware of the fable of the Jonestown? <laughs> uh, Mac is not. Very well, Mac. I will, I will regale you of it some other day. All right, are we are we helping him? Do we believe him? Very yes, trustworthy. Very now, trustworthy. We should right, for now. We should humour him and assist him in his quest for this plant. One right, caveat: is that if we're going adventuring with this guy, can we wash him first? <laughs> <laughs> so, over the course of your little altercation, a little crowd has gathered of people that were making their way into. Fuck. Uh, into the coach house. They're just like looking over at you, seeing this big orc holding up this sort of hunched over elf and they're just like watching. Just like, you know, like when you see those things happening in the street and you're just sort of like observing from the side and you sort of clock that they're watching you and you sort of, as soon as they clock that you've clocked, they sort of like just walk into the uh, the coach <laughs> house itself. Uh, what sort of time of day is it? Is it worth us setting out now? Um, so at this time, so you spent another evening. So it's actually, after eight hours travel from Tosca, it's starting to get to evening once more. 
Um, you know, you've spent quite a few days travelling on the on the road, making your way from place to place. You know that um, Marquis itself is two days travel to your south, um, and that's how long it will take you to, to get there. So, as in, like it's sort of like not. 48 hours worth of travel, it's sort of two solid days, so about 16 hours worth of travel um, down to Marquis. Um, but as you know, it's quite dangerous to travel at night. Mm. Um, the place where you need to get to Tan Tan is about half a day's travel from the coach house okay. itself, just south along the coastal road. You, Old Elf, how far is it to this monastery? Um, I'm not 100% sure, but I think it's about half a day's travel to the south. <laughs> 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 Very well. Perhaps we should leave at first light. That sounds good. Yes, yes. But uh, uh, food and sleep and yes and bath maybe. Yeah. Gillis will pay for your bath. Oh, Gillis. Pay, pay the man. I pay for the man's bath. Birdman, my new friend. Yes. <laughs> I mean Gillis. Sorry, Gillis. <laughs> yes. Um... And like Tink, Tink will lean to Mac and say, "Please, please, <laughs> please give Gillis his share." I'll say to Mac. All right, I will. I dip this guy. Oh wow! Well, okay, stuff. you want him to do the math, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think Tink could probably explain to him how much he needs to give him. <laughs> All right, you okay? You've you've told me how much to give him. Yeah. I, okay. I, I, I don't know how much we're carrying, but it's whatever it was split four ways, right? right. Um. Yeah. So thirty divided by four. Oh shit! <laughs> Keep the <laughs> remainder, man. <laughs> <laughs> Ma Max struck the killing blow, so uh, yeah, he gets the, the remainder. Bonus plus up. I'm not All right, so I'll, I'll give um, I give uh, E seven silver. Okay. So how much is digs and uh, a bath for our friend? So as you as you go back into uh, the dandy owl, um, you're greeted by um, Natalia. She's stood behind the bar and she sort of just looks at you. Uh, her blonde hair, this time loose. And she just looks across and goes, Ah! It's you again! It's you again! Um, please, come in! Sit! Um, I shall give you a drink! And she sort of starts pouring a drink and sort of passes them out and says, uh, You left before we ever got to thank you for helping us. Um, please, uh, stay the night. Uh, eat what you will. Um, this night is is on us. Can, can we get this chap a bath that's with us? Like, Hello. Um, yes. <laughs> and she sort of looks and goes. He doesn't smell that bad, but yes, sure, he can have a bath. <laughs> you haven't stood close to him for very long. Yeah. I'm pretty sure there's something in his britches um, after Mac picked him up. I think <laughs> Tink might, um, while he's in the bath, might try and like fix these robes that are in a state of disrepair. Patch up the holes, etc. OCD. And I mean, so at this moment, she does... She's downstairs, does, downstairs does. with Mac. King Mac, <laughs> she, she, let's get, hit the bar. We need to drink. Mac Celebrate. hits the bar. As well. <laughs> as, she, <laughs> as she like looks at you and goes, as the, as the drinks that she's already poured sort of like rattle and spill a bit, and she's like, all right, um... Please have have a drink and um, sort of like turns the mug towards you and sort of slides it in your general direction. As, as she's doing that, she says, uh, "Livy, Livy, could you get the um, get the bath running out by the stable house, please?" And um, she tub. sort of comes back and goes, "Yes, yes, mummy," and sort of um, goes goes back out uh, outside. Um, there's a there's a little bit of atmosphere, sort of th there's sort of a bit of jovial. So there's a few people staying, and as, as you sort of start conversation, she does like um, look at you, Tink, and she goes, uh, "Actually, I believe you've still got the key. You never gave it back before you left. Um, you can have the same room." Ah, very well. And and can you please give the key back before you leave <laughs> next time? And he kind of rummages in his pockets, and like there's there's probably no key in there. He probably lost it at some point. Yes, very well. I shall, leave it, I shall leave it at the front desk when we when we depart. If he stitched his own pockets, it's in so, the field somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so and you spend uh, an evening. Is there anything you would like particularly do, or are you just going to have a nice merry drink? Is there um like is there a bard in the in the bar area? Um, there there isn't. Um, we recruiting there isn't a bard. more for the party. Um, what are you doing? You <laughs> 
you do you do you do remember that there's there's the lute that's just sat on the side which is Livy's lute um and she played some music last time that you were there but normally that doesn't start until her fish uh, her shift ends until her fish I think we ends. need to wait around to uh get Livy to make a song <laughs> for our uh, a ballad of our adventure so far a ballad so for to return your of the mac barmaid <laughs> a return of the mac <laughs> Once again, <laughs> <laughs> so you're sort of you're all you're all in this in this bar. It's sort of you know you you get your wash tan tan. It's a very nice, relaxing, warm bath. Um, you're not quite sure where the bubbles have come from, but there are <laughs> bubbles in your bath as, as well. It probably makes a few um, of his own. But you do feel, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and 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 you do come out quite refreshed and clean, and sort of probably by this time, um, Mac and. Galen and Gillis, if you've been drinking, you've probably drunk uh, at least two or three uh, pints by this time. It's a free bar after all. About an hour or so passes and then Livy struts over and just sort of you see her have a conversation with her mum and she goes over, grabs hold of her lute and just sits on the bar and just sort of starts tuning her lute. Tink is just sat at the table with you. He's just obviously I, I, t- Tink doesn't really partake in any drink or anything like that. He just sits there. Just makes gonna, bit of conversation. Just going to shout across, Livy, Livy, play us a song. Play King Mac a song. And she looks over and she sort of starts sort of, uh, 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 and she sort of starts sort of. She says, I don't usually sort of sing whilst I play. Um, I'll give it a go. And she starts playing a melody, and it goes a little bit out of tune when she starts to sing. Um, it's rather like Phoebe from Friends. Um, the ballad of when, the smelly cow. Smelly elf. Sort of sta- smelly elf. You know, <laughs> and, and sort of starts singing like, Big smelly orc. Smelly elf. Smelly elf. Smelly <laughs> elf. <laughs> well. Big orc. Big orc. He saved me. He saved me. Wonderful night. Big orc. Big orc. He calls himself Mac. 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 I'm not very good at this. And she sort of no, like, you are sits not. There and, <laughs> and she sort of, <laughs> and she sort of sighs a moment. And and uh, her mum sort of like looks over, just rolls her eyes, and she goes back to sort of playing. Um, and when she's not singing, she's sort of actually playing a really nice tune. Clearly singing and playing at the same time is, is not her, her forte. But, you know, the music that she plays fills the room with a, a lovely ambience as you sort of sit there drinking and, and, and talking. Is there anything in particular you would like to talk about? Has Tan Tan joined us now? He has from his wash. Right. He's nice and clean. I imagine I'll go up to him and put my arm around him. So, Mr. Tan Tan, <clears throat> do you, how did you come to be here? Uh, um, walking, yes. <laughs> oh, we walked here as well. <laughs> Where did you walk here from? Um, I am not... Too sure. I've been been around uh, Tosca. I've been to Tosca, yes. Yeah, many places, many places. Then ended up here. Yeah. Mm. Just goes wherever his eyes take him. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like my character's been typecast as the <laughs> stinky, boss-eyed <laughs> elf of the party. We all have. We've all just sort of fallen into these characters there. It just it's become what it is. I'm glad. I want them to start off as bird boy. Oh dear. <laughs> Matt, Here you, you go. Are you Have okay a drink. Keeping this guy warm this evening. You'll need to keep a close eye on him. He said he needs to stay close to you. you all right, sharing a bed with him. Uh, I can keep an eye on him. It is much better now. He doesn't smell so bad. Uh, I hope you don't roll over in your sleep. Otherwise, I might get squashed. Uh. You might. <laughs> I- I'll take the floor then. Uh, Jeremy already has the floor. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, uh, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Tam Tam, you may use my room. I have no need of the bed. Oh, uh, I simply stand in the corner to recharge. Well, that isn't creepy at all. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Tink doesn't really have eyelids either, so he's just staring. He's just staring all night. <laughs> oh, wonderful! Oh, wonderful! 
wonderful. So about this kind of time, um, I would like uh, Mac and Galen to make constitution drinking sessions, <laughs> please. <laughs> Seven. Fifteen. <laughs> okay, so Galen, you are fine. Uh, Mac, you are starting to feel the effects of your uh, your drink. Maybe somebody spiked your drink because <laughs> you, you are quite taken aback that Galen is sort of completely fine. But you're starting to feel uh, a bit merry. These are some good drinks. How, how... It is nice to be having good drinks with my good friends. Oh, I guess I've already got my arm still round Tan Tan. I will. You do. I will try and try and put my arm round Gillis and and everyone else who is in uh, in reach. In our in our in reach. So with your giant arms, you manage to sort of get onto round Gillis, and you get your hand onto onto Galen's shoulder as well, and you sort of bring everybody goes together. Um, you know, hugging your friends. Yeah. We should have we should have a name for us all, like, like, I don't know, like what. So when so when people do sing songs about us, they don't have to list us all one by one, which would take too long. We could have a name, and they could say that name and know that it meant all of us. How about Blazing Squad? <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of a name. Um, hmm. No. Yeah. We could like take all our <laughs> names idea, and combine right? them together, so we could have take the first bit of my name, so it would be King, <laughs> and then <laughs> Jer for Jeremy, Ger for Gillis. <laughs> Gur for Galen, and then Ink for Tink. So it would be King J G G Ink. I like it. It's got a ring to it. I think if you ever heard a story with uh, King J G G Ink, you would definitely remember it. Yes, I think so but too. The only issue with it. Mac, the only issue we've got here is what rhymes with King Jagger King. <laughs> Stink! Stink rhymes with that. <laughs> yes. Coke is a jink, like and their new friend who has a stink. Well, uh, not anymore, I've had a shower and a bath since then. Who had a stink? Yeah, very good, yeah. Had, past tense. <laughs> I, th- I, I think, it- Mac... It may be time for bed. <laughs> yeah, at this point, Tink is gonna is gonna sort of say, "Well, gentlemen, I shall retire. Enjoy your merriment." And they all sort of stomp upstairs, and he's like, "Tam Tam, will you be joining me?" Uh, I wouldn't put it like that, but um, <laughs> <laughs> there's, yeah, there's no there's no hint of irony in, in Tink's voice. He's just, <laughs> he's just so matter of fact. He, he doesn't even realise what he's uh, saying. Tink uh, has a punch on for chameleons. I, I suppose so, yes. <laughs> nice warm bed, sounds good. And it'll patter well. up the stairs behind you. Yeah, I'm assuming Tink knows which room it is. <laughs> it's unlocked still. Yes, he's he's it. he makes his way up and sort of you go to the door hoping it's unlocked and it is, luckily. So you sort of make your way in and, and you sort of get there and you can all bed down for the night. Um, as you're sat there, Mac, you're still thinking about this idea of a name and sort of as, as the evening goes on you all start to sort of drift off thinking yeah a name could be something that we could come up with um, and you know you all have a bit of a, a sleep on it but you all have a wonderfully restful night um, Mac a little bit disturbed by the, the a number of drinks you've had you know you have one of those slightly restless nights sleep um, you end up uh, one, one part of the night you've fallen onto the floor and you're hugging Jeremy um, and sort of, you know, you, you put yourself back up onto the bed. Um, but but otherwise, you have a, a restful night. As you wake, the sun comes through, and beautiful frost outside the windows of the various rooms that you're in. And another day dawns. Hmm, what would you like to do? I'll wake up with an epiphany of a name, and we could be King's Free Company. Short KFC. <laughs> 
Oh, jeez. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> Get some sly sponsors. We'll, we'll, we'll there change. <laughs> <laughs> okay, see so you if you're listening. Some, over some. Over some breakfast. We'll as work for hot wings. <laughs> Colonel Sanders, call us, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Over a lovely fried chicken sandwich for breakfast. We, uh, mm. <laughs> Have you heard about their latest and... saver menu bird items? They're great. <laughs> <laughs> other, other fried chicken establishments are available. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think we, we, we can set off we on the road set out, to we? this yeah, we uh, monastery. So, you, so 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 over over your over your over your breakfast sort of uh, you know Galen uh, sorry Gillis does does share his his idea of the king's free company um, but you sort of start making your way on the road and you sort of start heading south towards uh, where Tantan uh, needs to go sort Tink, of as you've been gonna, on the road sorry John as as we're travelling nope. Tink is going to explain in great detail to Tam Tam exactly what we did on the previous adventure including <laughs> all of the minute detail about how we figured out that riddle <laughs> probably takes about the time that it takes us to get there right yeah probably probably does you know you probably get ha- you know as you're telling all of this story there is half halfway along your journey along the road um, you do uh, sort of get held up for, for, for a moment. Oh, where's my list gone? Ah, oh, my list. Hold um, on, the highwayman. <laughs> just talk him to death. It's fine. Yeah. Please. Um, at one point, um, Tan's <laughs> eyes roll back of his head. But, uh, that was just Tan. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so as, you, <laughs> as you're making your way along the road, as you're making your way along the road, you do uh, pass a small shrine just to the side of the road. Um, and you sort of like as you sort of like walk past you don't recognise the god of this shrine but you do see the odd little offering around it uh, okay you spit on whoa, it whoa 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 hang on a second before he does okay. that what what are the offerings like are they, is it food is it um so you find Spitting like just sat there there's a slightly a slightly rotten apple that's been there for a couple of days there's a few flowers there's now a little bit of spit running down it as well <laughs> Um, and you know, there's there's also a couple of coins just left by the side as well. Yeah, I'll I'll, uh, I'll take those for the Ember Order. They'll uh... okay. You take the coins. Yep, they'll be re- re- okay. repatriated into the uh, Ember Order. <laughs> They're not frowned upon. So you take the coins. <laughs> you you well, take the coins um, and, you, and you put them. This God and religion. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, there's only really uh, one true God anyway. So as far as I'm concerned, here they can help himself. So you, you, you take the coins. The Anyone else do anything else? No, I think, Tink's preoccupied, mm-hmm. like, talking the ears off of Tam Tam today. Okay. So you carry on talking. You sort of carry on travelling for about another hour or so, and, and um, Galen, you go into your pocket to sort of reach for those coins, and they're not there anymore. And uh, Gillis, when you're walking along, mm-hmm. you sort of absentmindedly just put your hand in your pocket, and it's full of spit. <laughs> 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 I was saving that. <laughs> and you sort of yes, put I'm it like... out, and your hands just covered in spit. I'm a bit annoyed because that was a proper hocker as well. Oh. <laughs> 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 yeah. Oh. So I flick it off like Spider-Man style off the side. I'm going to make the sign of the, the rook. Oh, oh, flick it off! He said, of... "Lick it off." I thought he said oh, that yeah. as well. I was I... like. Ugh. Uh, well, no. I've realised the coins have disappeared, but I don't want to also acknowledge the fact that there could be another god, so I'm just not going to tell anyone about it. <laughs> or a pickpocket. <laughs> you, you spat in your pocket. Yeah. <laughs> you, you better hope that's spit. Oh, you had to go there, didn't you? Oh. Oh. I was waiting. I was waiting. Someone had to do it. It wasn't me this time. Someone shazammed my pocket. So- <laughs> so as you sort of as you make your way uh, a little bit further um, south you sort of follow the path the sun is sort of bringing up into the middle of the day and, and reaching its highest point um, as you sort of walk south uh, the, the frost has stuck around for most of the morning um, and as sort of as you look around it's, it's really quite a beautiful sight over the rolling hills as you make your way further south you do eventually reach a bridge that runs over a large river. And at this point, uh, Tantan, you, you stop and pause. 
and you look over to, to the right hand side of the road away from the coast and this is this is the path that you remember this is the riverside path that takes you off towards the monastery that is further within the marshlands um, and the, the, the rest of you sort of stop with the group and Tantan just pauses and <clears throat> looks over towards the path yeah this 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 way I think yes 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 we've definitely been this way before yes, yes. along here have we? Uh, not, not you, not you, me, me, and uh, my little friend. <laughs> and as your son of stood there looking at him, he taps the side of his staff, and a little bird flies out the top of it, and just perches oh, on the top of it. That's a clever trick. Gillis can do something similar. Oh, uh, can he? He makes little birds appear. Really? <laughs> I'm just jealous that his bird can fly. It's like sort of eyeing it up suspiciously. One day have that gift so in my sort of natural law uh, skill would I understand what kind of wizard the mage uh, um, he hasn't is? shown he hasn't shown what his powers are so you don't know <clears throat> you get you get the idea he's definitely magic of some kind because he's got you know the staff. He's sort of like that. There is a magical aura coming from him. You can sense that magical power. And in fact, um, Gillis as well. Uh, sorry, Galen as well. You would notice the the magic um, from this. Um, so, as you sort of start to to meander your way along this river, you sort of take this path. It's long overgrown and very rarely trodden. I mean, Tan Tan. Uh, sort of was here recently but one person doesn't make the impact that five do it's quite easy to navigate and follow but it is slow going and it does take you some time to get along the path as you sort of make your way along there is a slight part that's a little bit muddy and there seems to be no other way to, to get around it I would like you all, as you're sort of meandering through this path, just to make a dexterity save. Oh, that's not Ooh. bad. Um, 8, 11, mm -hmm. uh, 13 with a double 4. 19 with a double 6. Ooh. 13 with a double 5. So I guess I can do like a handstand five. through it or something. <laughs> uh, 10 with double nothing. Ten. I oh, know. I oh, know. Hang on. Okay. Is it, um, dexterity eleven. Sorry. Dexterity eleven. Fantastic. Um, so, pretty much everybody are on that. Uh, Tink, what do you what did you roll? Okay, we are looking at five, six, seven, eight, nine plus my dex of one ten. Ten. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> as you as you as you get your your. <laughs> your feet through that the group makes their way over uh tink as you as you get to the muddy patch you put your foot on what you think is stable ground you slip and you fall and you land in the river oh my uh, is, it's quite cold is this a deep river or is it just like ankle deep or um so where he's at it's 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 relatively deep in the centre, you guess. Whereas he's sort of fallen into it, it's more like he's just covered in mud yeah. and sort of like he's a little bit stuck um, and and very wet. I can feel it. I can oh feel dear, it sinking. Tink. Help! I'll reach in and pull him out. I'm guessing he's just completely yeah, like to make helpless because he strength. just can't stand up. Yeah. I'd like you to make a strength check, please. Oh dear. Uh, not too bad. Please uh, hurry, Mac. 14. This is ruining my clothes. Fourteen. <laughs> he sort of pulls pulls you out and gets you up onto the side and and Tink, you are just sodden. Um, what you do notice, Mac, is when you are pulling that, his clothes are wet and they are cold. Um, but luckily, you're a metal being, um, so you know whilst things feel a bit stiff and tight, you know that the encroaching cold sort of doesn't seem to to bother you too much. And the rest of you manage to make your way along this this path. As you're working along the path, you sort of take in the scenery around you. You see the reeds off to your right-hand side, um, going up onto the rolling hills. To your left, the wide river. Over the other side, you see sort of patches of sort of wetland, swamp, 
start to appear. The further away from the coast you go, whilst it's slow going, you do start to notice that it gets wetter in places. The mud beneath your feet becomes slightly thicker. And the path still, it's overgrown nature, you're working through it. And it takes you a good few hours to meander through. You reach a point where the river makes a huge turn. And you notice that on the inside of this turn, there is a large, large swampland covered in this thick mist. As you follow the path, it sort of turns towards the river and faces out over the river. And you can see over the other side, a path just sort of continues off into the swamp. Clearly where this path follows is over the river. The question is, how are you going to get across? And that is where we will stop this slightly shorter episode. But uh, yes, that is where we will pause um, for today. So thank you very much uh, for listening at home. And thank you very much for um, you folks playing through this. That was hilarious. That was really good. (laughs) My face hurts. My My face actually hurts. I'm not a natural smiler. (laughs) I'm actually, um, yeah, I'm in actual pain. Wow. on my face. Wow, <laughs> that was utterly hilarious. And thank you very much, Ollie, it's for a pleasure. joining thank us for having this me. time round. Um, so, and, you know, so obviously you've got to stick around because <laughs> Tan Tan is now exactly. uh, with the group for the with moment. With KFC. So, uh, we'll, with KFC, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, it's you know, so, so next time round in what will be... Um, episode number seven, blimey, Ooh. seven episodes already. Um, can you believe we'll it? Still have Ollie Jonas. I know, right? Can Can you believe it? So, um, thank you very much, everybody, for listening. Thank you for um, sticking with us, our group, and wow, the the random wonderful things that happened in today's episode. Oh my goodness, that was wonderful. Thank you, John. Good. That well was really, really good. Thank well you very much. Um, yeah, cheers. So. Um, As we go forward, we'll find out more about what these shadows could be, what on earth this old giant book holds, and maybe a little bit more about that staff um, as well. And obviously find out a little bit about Palace Palantalan. And how tall was that dwarf Um, that originally had the staff, right? Because if it's a six foot (laughs) staff, which are two dwarfs on each other's shoulders holding it. (laughs) So we had two hand It was was like wearing a coat, wearing a coat. (laughs) <laughs> and the most important question, how tall was the dwarf that used that star? <laughs> um, so thank you very much for listening, everybody. We Maybe will the catch you in the it. next episode. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, Thanks. We'll catch you in the next episode. So thank you very much no and see you next time. Cheers. Bye. 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 Thank you for listening to our show. We hope you enjoy it as much as we do. On that topic, if you did like the show, please leave us a review to help more people find their way to us. Anyway, we look forward to having you along for the next part of the journey. And just remember the most important question. What would you like to do?